I speak today to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the death of Georges Bataille. What follows is best introduced by the words of the man himself. Everything that writes in me is love, incendiary. The truth that I bear in me cries out with the force of slowly articulating the angular words. Truth. Comprehending the truth of love, of death, of laughter and tears, of such experiences that clearly disclose the impossible. This truth is unbearable. We attain this impossible truth only blind and burning. In that moment in which we surrender to self-loss and are consumed in the sovereign instant, doomed to disappearance, consumed in the conflagrations of love. Love lets self-loss speak without words. Love at degree zero is without signification. It is without words. It is the shattering of our separation. It is an embrace. It is the opening of worlds into one another, a dissolution that makes words superfluous. This truth is, strictly speaking, beyond words. It is unknowable. It exists inextricably bound up in a relationship of complementarity, a discordant accord with that other side of truth, which is the business of scientific rationality, of lucidity, of desireless knowledge, production of knowledge as an object knowledge, an objective description of the world, a world of things and of possibilities. Irreducible to objectivity, such experiences as love, laughter, and tears are thereby no less real and no less a part of the world in which we live and die. They escape the grasp of knowledge, properly speaking, and yet without them, no communication, no knowledge would be possible. They would be impossible. And truth would remain incomplete, not only incomplete, but impossible. In principle, it is the fundamental unknowability of death itself that guarantees the necessarily incomplete status of life and of history, of the world and of the totality of the universe. We read in the manuscripts that became the preface to the impossible, written and published in the first months of 1962. Science is silent about the moment in which reflection loses its moorings within the impossible. The truth of love and of death, that is, of the impossible, can only come into the view of objective knowledge, whether according to the not methods dictated by scientific reason or by philosophies with scientific pretensions, such as phenomenology or logical positivism, by means of a reduction. Any objective description and knowledge of love, of death, is only possible from without and after the fact. Mistaking love or death for mere biological phenomena amounts to an amputation of all that arises from experience. While it is a work of decidedly broader perspective and, in my view, greater intellectual rigor and honesty than most works of such philosophy, Landsberg's essay on the, exist on the experience of death remains the fruit of a project doomed in advance, a project that could only fall short or fail utterly. One simply cannot have knowledge of the experience of death from the perspective of the one who dies. For death is essentially the permanent disappearance of the very subject of that knowledge. In so many ways, the ensemble of mankind has fallen into a trap. This much we can grasp. This we read also in the manuscripts for the preface of the impossible. Our inevitable final fall into that impossible is our final common destiny. Slipping beyond the bounds of meaning into absolute senselessness, Every being does finally escape from the twin prison houses of selfhood and of world. Likewise, from that of language, the final destiny which we share with every living being is to at last venture beyond every possibility, to transgress the most distance of knowledge of limits, and to go beyond knowledge. We are bound to joyously disappear into that unknown domain and to take leave of the world of knowledge without so much as a shadow of a self remaining. Dissolution into boundless imminence is our final destination, for the world in which we live is that of a false, reified transcendence. Deified. The lie of transcendence is supplanted by truth in the final reckoning. For, as Bataille wrote, the totality of the world rests finally on my precarious self and on death. In truth, we are bound together by the universal and inevitable disappearance of ourselves. 
Would this then not be the nothing of transcendence? No, let us not be seduced by the thought of nothingness. Human existence is always in suspense of death. Beneath the surface there is an inconceivable abyss into which one day we will fall. Does the end of all possibility and of all knowledge on the individual level signify or reveal nothingness, non-being, as absolute truth, as the ultimate truth of life, of being? No, for we can only speak of nothing as poets, as dupes, or as liars. For nothing only exists as the abstract negation of something that is, or of all that is. There is no nothing, no experience of nothing. What's more, even in a vacuum, there exists a sort of creation ex nihilo, an ephemeral creation destined to return to its origin and to repetition. Experience is immeasurable, and the universe is inconceivable. When we confuse our impossible destiny with absolute annihilation, we succumb to the seductive, cold comfort of nihilism. We suppose that we have attained absolute knowledge, absolute truth, an end of history, an immutable, ultimate truth, the final, sum total of all that is, can be, and cannot be. We thereby forget that human existence is of its essence, an unanswerable, open question, forever incomplete and incompletable, and worthy of living for that reason alone. As Bataille was wont to quote, to quote from Nietzsche, I love my ignorance of the future, ignorance of the future only being possible on the basis of our essential incompletion of the incompletion of the world and the unanswerability of the question that is man, woman, the human. That is the question of existence. I shall close with the final words published by Georges Bataille in his lifetime, the words with which the preface to the impossible concludes. We are never within our rights in preferring seduction Truth has rights over us. Indeed, it has every right. And yet we can, and indeed we must, responding to something that not being God is stronger than every right, that impossible, to which we accede only by forgetting the truth of all those rights, only by accepting disappearance. Thank you, and good night.